Pricing is always a hard subject to cover because there are many variables to look at from each Azure service. I'll walk through a realistic pricing scenario that I hope will help you understand if using Azure CDN makes sense for your workload. The numbers I will use are accurate to help compare each scenario, but should not be used as a reference. You can study the pricing details of each Azure product on Azure.com, which I really recommend you do before going live with production workloads. You can use the same calculation exercise I'll walk through to help estimate your costs. Pricing Azure workloads is worth its own course since there are so many different variables that can be tweaked to cause large changes in total cost for your bill. In this scenario though, the following assumptions are used to try to keep things simple. The Azure account prices I'm basing this off of are the lowest tier, Locally Redundant Storage, or LRS. This means that your files are replicated within the Azure region, such as Azure East. In this scenario, there are only 10 files stored, amounting to 1.2 megabytes of total storage used. When I talk about data transfer costs, we're going to assume that all of that occurs within Zone 1, which is basically the Americas. The farther out you go, such as Zone 2 or Zone 3, the higher the costs are. When talking about the CDN, we're going to assume that the origin content is cached with a max TTL or a time to live, so the CDN only retrieves a file once from blob storage. If the file expires and the CDN has to go back and retrieve the file from the origin, that's going to incur additional costs. The reason I'm enforcing these constraints is because you can safely assume the cost will increase if any of these metrics increase. These metrics are still important for your workload, so you'll have to try and take them into account if doing your own math. Starting without Azure CDN, let's say that we're hosting our static website, contoso.com, on an Azure Blob Storage endpoint URL, and we're going to reload the page 1 million times, or send 1 million users to load the site. This means to load the site, we need to load all 10 hosted files and read them from storage. The two costs that are important here are the cost to keep the data in Azure Storage itself and the cost of each read operation. Here I'm using some rough numbers that again are not a reflection of current pricing, they're just here to help illustrate. If we do the math and calculate the storage costs and the cost to perform 10 million read operations, or 1 million requests times 10 files, we can see this amounts to only about $4 per month. Remember though, from before, we don't get any advantages of Azure CDN here, so even though the bill is low, user experience might suffer from latency issues or performance issues. Now let's introduce Azure CDN into our scenario. Instead of measuring in total requests, we now need to think more in terms of unique views or users visiting the site. Each time a new user visits the site, they're served content from the CDN. The benefit is that the very first user who visits the site primes the CDN's cache, incurring the initial storage read cost only once. Now if we introduce the CDN transfer cost to our calculations, we can see that the storage read operations reduce from 1 million to only 10, which brings total storage costs to not even 100 thousandth of a cent. From now on, storage will represent less than 1 cent of our total cost and CDN cost will take over. CDN transfer cost is measured in bytes over the wire, so we take the 1.2 megs, convert it to gigabytes, and multiply by the number of users, in this case just one, this brings us to a grand total of not even one thousandth of a cent. With one user, we can't measure the cost to even a cent, so let's increase the CDN load to 1,000 users. Now we might pay around 10 cents to host the site for a month. With 50,000 users, we can see a pattern where cost is going up linearly, now amounting to about $5. This is the threshold where, in our scenario, we match the price to serve 1 million raw storage requests. Now let's bring us back to serving 1 million unique users. This brings the total to $108. This exercise should illustrate that storage costs will only be a fraction of what you'll be built compared to CDN costs. Now if we were to increase the pricing tier of our storage account to zone redundant storage or something higher than that, we'd pay more, but it would still be relatively lower overall. Walking through a scenario like this for your own workload might prove insightful, but once you're using these services, how can you report on these costs? In the next demo, we'll see just how to do that.